All right, welcome everyone to Rise. We're so glad that you're here. Bring it in, bring it in close. If you can, we got plenty of seating up here. Welcome to our virtual uh, community as well. This is the first time we're hybrid. We're, we're gathered here in the room. We're scattered in different places. Wow. Wow. This is the first time we've been in this space together, gathered in 468 days. Wow. Long time. I mean, but who's counting? Just this guy. Um, I'm so glad to be back here. What a gift. Uh, this space, uh, it was used for worship. Obviously, we were outdoor in the garden for a season. And uh, we were outdoor because here in our space, we administered over 12,000 uh, vaccination shots. So we were very intent on caring for our community and doing everything we can uh, in the midst of COVID and uh, the world's changed a lot, and we're coming back together. We're going to start a new series this week on Acts uh, and really ask, what does it mean to be church again, to be faith community again? So I think that covers most things. I, ca I can't even remember. Uh, I was trying to think through all the, the rhythms and whatnot. Um, we invite you, as we worship, take whatever posture is most comfortable for you. We believe that God wants to connect with us in so many different ways, and that's why we gather to, to dedicate some time for that work, to be filled by God who is love in order that love might flow through us. We don't have any bulletins or orders of worship. We'll just sort of go with the flow, and we'll prompt you on what we're going to do today, but we're going to sing together, we're going to read together scripture, we're going to hear from God, we're going to share at the table of communion, so I cannot wait. Welcome back, everyone. Special thanks to Jordan, man, and all uh, the band, people who volunteered throughout the pandemic to, to get us through to this point. Uh, it, it's, it was tough. Speaking to an empty room is so hard, so Please give me some like good feedback today. Uh, good feedback to, to all of us. That would be amazing. So let's take a moment. Uh, we'll pray and then we'll turn our hearts to God in worship. So if you'll bow your heads with me, let's pray. God, we are here to worship you. We pray that you will fill us with your spirit of life, God. Fill us as we worship, as we reconnect, as we reach out for you, knowing that you've already reached out to us, God. This is holy ground. Right here where we are gathered and where we're scattered as well. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hand it over to you, Jordan. We, want you to, we invite you to stand if you're able. We're going to sing our first song called We Rise. Worship is our time for us to connect with God. It's a time for us to thank God for all the stuff that he's done for us. Amen. We rise. Red. 
possesses our web Joy is our strength And we wait upon the Lord and find Strength to spread our wings and fly From glory to glory From glory to glory You tell our story We will overcome We'll walk on the water With our eyes on the Father Nothing is impossible Amen. We surrender to you. I surrender. With 
seated. We're going to have a time of connecting for a few minutes. Uh, our kids are going to be heading off to Sunday school with our Sunday school staff who are over on this side of the room. We have Miss Stephanie and Miss Kenya. So children, you can head over with them. During these next couple minutes, uh, take a moment, meet someone new or maybe someone you haven't seen in a long time. Fill up on your coffee and then we'll continue worship in a couple minutes. Thank you.
Amen. We invite you to gather with us back again. We'll continue worshiping. <clears throat> You're filling up in your coffee and wrapping up your conversations. We invite you to join us in the front. <clears throat> we'll continue worshiping this morning. Our next song is called Hosanna. Amen. By the way, it's really nice to see everybody again. It's been so long since we've been up here. The band misses, misses all of this, so we're really excited. We're happy to be here with you guys. We invite you to take any posture that you want to take. You can sit down. You can stand up. Um, we believe God can meet us in any posture that we are. Just open up your hearts to God. Hosanna. Oh, 
Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Let's give the band some love. Yes, thank you. Spirit, fill my words and our hearts that we might hear from you. Amen. This morning, our scripture reading is from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. All right, we are starting a new series today on the book of Acts, and we're going to be spending a lot of time here. The idea is that we're going to go through the whole thing, the whole book, chapter by chapter. And my hope in doing this is that we're going to develop a robust and deep understanding of our origins, our starting Point as a community because Acts tells the story of the start of the church. And that's going to help us as we're rebuilding what it means to be community, church, post-pandemic, what it means to restart. And it's going to help us be on a solid and trusted foundation. We're in line with the ancestors who've gone before us and, and paved the way and showed us wisdom And the world uh, that we've been thrust into, our world right now at this moment has been shaken. It has been shaken. We have pandemics all over the place, right? Whether it's medical, COVID, whether it's social, racial injustice, whether it's economic, the massive income inequality, all sorts of brokenness. And, and problems. And it's at these moments of disintegration, these moments of disorientation, where when things are in disarray, when they've come apart, that we're invited to do something. We're invited to take stock of things. And then once we do that, we're invited to start putting the pieces back together, but not just how they were put together before, because we know how they were put together was not working as it should be, right? We all feel that. But we want to put things back together. We want to rebuild in better ways. And so something more true and beautiful and sustainable is what I'm looking for. I think it's what we're looking for, what the world is looking for. And I think the way to find this is ironically not looking forward. Like our technological culture is always saying, look forward, what's next? What's the newest thing? But I think we actually find a better way to move into the future by actually going back, going to the start of things, the beginning point. And Acts tells the story of the first Christians and the ecclesias, that's the Greek term for the churches, the communities that that they formed. It's the starting point. Acts 
is the starting point. And so as we restart, my hope is that the same spirit that was moving then in that community following Jesus will be the spirit that moves through our community and shapes and forms us. Today, I want to move through just chapter one, lifting up a few different themes that start to emerge that are going to run throughout the book of Acts. And this isn't going to be exhaustive because the reality is if we wanted to do a close reading of Acts uh, through preaching and teaching, that would take us at least two years. We're only going to take the next six months, the rest of this year, to get into Acts. Uh, so for you, for all of us, whether you're here uh, uh, virtually, to get the most out of this, you're going to need to read along for yourself. I, I, I invite you to be reading the book of Acts one chapter a week. Sit with it. Read it multiple days. So you're going to be prepared. You're going to know what we're talking about. You're going to be ready to engage deeply. And most importantly, you're going to let this story sink into who you are uh, and shape you. And that's easy. You can do it. You can do it. Whether it's in your old school Bible, whether it's on your app, whatever it may be, start reading Acts because we're going to be doing it a lot together. And my hope is that this will become uh, the centering point around which we're going to build this community rise. Rise just started about a year before the pandemic. I think we've been a community separated more than we've actually been together. So we're, we're starting over, and I want this story to be our story. How do we appropriate this and make it our story for 2021 right here in Escondido, in our neighborhoods and our communities? And this is going to give us a common language to work from as we're exploring what it means to be church. That's our question. What does it mean to be church? All right, so chapter one starts where most biblical stories start, and that's with waiting. Waiting. Thinking back in the whole scope of the Bible, the, the first paradigmatic story, the prime example story of God's work in the world is the story of the Exodus, right? Where God calls the people out of brokenness and slavery into healing and into freedom. And that first story, it starts with 400 years of waiting in Egypt. There's an insight here. The spiritual journey starts with inaction. It starts with stopping and waiting. It starts slowly. It starts where it seems like nothing is happening. And the spiritual question when we're in that moment is, um, do you think that this absence, this long wait, this silence from God, is that just an end? Is that the end of the story? Or perhaps is that a new beginning? Is something new about to happen when it seems like nothing's happening? Spirituality asks the question that way. The disciples in Acts are in Jerusalem where the Jesus story came to its climax with Pilate and the Jewish leaders and Passover. And finally, it all led to this hill called the Place of the Skull where Jesus is hung on a cross. But that's not it. Then out of this death and impossibility, this place is also where resurrection and new life start to happen Jerusalem's an important place. And Acts starts here at the end of Jesus' 40 days after his resurrection of teaching about God and the things of God to his disciples. The text says that he was speaking about the kingdom of God. And as Jesus is getting ready to depart, to ascend into heaven, he tells the disciples... Wait, wait here, wait for this thing that God has promised. 
And the promise is this, that God's going to send the Spirit down upon them. Just as the Spirit came down onto Jesus at the start of his ministry at the River Jordan, so too that same Spirit comes down on the church. The Spirit of Christ that fills Jesus is the same Spirit moving and filling us today. That's how deeply connected we are to Jesus. That's the promise. So might it be that as we're waiting, we are waiting for the Spirit. That waiting's important. Our fast-paced culture thinks if you wait, man, you're losing money, you're losing time, you're losing it. But I don't think that's true in the spiritual perspective. Waiting is so important. It's actually what we desperately need to let the Spirit fill us for ministry like Jesus before us. And what's ministry, right? That's like this technical church term. Ministry is just an extension of the things that Jesus did. What Jesus did, we continue to do. That is our ministry. And so the first verse of Acts 1, 1 is rendered best when it reads this. Theophilus, that's a Greek name, and it, it means lover of God. Theophilus, you who love God, this letter is addressed to you. This story is addressed to you. I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and began to teach. So when we come to Acts, we're in volume two already. It's the sequel to the Gospel of Luke, which is the start. But here's the cool thing. Jesus isn't done after volume one, episode one. Jesus' work is continuing, and that's what Acts is saying, and we're invited to participate in that. That is a meaningful life. Jesus isn't like other historical figures that just like informs us from the past. Jesus' life and teaching... And what he does continues. It keeps going in the spirit-filled community. Acts is so clear about that. And God's work always moves in this way throughout Scripture. It moves from the one to the many. So from the one Jesus to this church scattered throughout the world, this multitude. Your life, your singular life, you just have one life, right? Right? That spills over into so many other lives, whether you realize it or not. It flows out continually. And so the question is, what's flowing out of you? What's coming out of your life and affecting all those lives around you? Is it grace and forgiveness and unconditional love, the things that Jesus showed us? Or is it something else? How are we going to get that lined up? So before Jesus departs, before Jesus ascends into heaven, his disciples are like, hey, Jesus, don't go yet. We got to ask you an important question. And they're like, Jesus, is now the time that you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus is like, hey, guys, bros, how long have we been doing this and you still don't? get it do you that's not what it's about this isn't about one particular community or one particular group this is about everyone and everything that's what jesus has been trying to teach but we don't get that so often right we don't get it we narrow down god's work That's our tendency. We tie up restoration and healing with these narrow categories for a small amount of people, and it tends to be the people that we like or who think like us or look like us. For the first Christian community that was all Jewish, that meant tying up the kingdom of God with the nation of Israel. For us, though, 
in places where Christianity is the majority religion, I think we have a tendency to tie up the kingdom of God with political power or movements or influence. We want to put God on our team, but God won't be put onto any one team. The kingdom of God is too expansive for this. It's too big. Jesus says, the Spirit makes you witnesses, not just in Jerusalem, not just in this one place, right? The Spirit doesn't just make you witnesses in Judea. That's a little bigger region around Jerusalem. And he says, not just in Samaria, a little bigger geographical area, but it makes you witnesses to God's love and work in the world to the ends of the earth. It's expansive. It flows over everything. The church is a global community of love and grace. The church speaks every different language. It finds a home in all different cultures and with all different peoples. It's for every tribe and nation and tongue. And after commissioning the church by Jesus to to do this, to be witnesses everywhere with everyone, he ascends into heaven. And the disciples come back to Jerusalem to wait. So there's a lot of waiting. And the text says that they were constantly devoting themselves to prayer. We just did a series for the past three months on prayer. It's all online if you didn't get to connect with that. Prayer is so important. It's the starting point. It's fitting that we spent three months in prayer and now we're going to do six months in Acts. And then at some point as they're praying, discerning, what are we supposed to do? And as they're waiting, right? Peter says this. He's like, hey, we got to address the elephant in the room, everybody. We got a big problem, right? That problem is Judas. I know. Judas, the one who betrayed Jesus. And it's interesting with this betrayal, there's a powerful wordplay that's going on here in the book of Acts. It's hard to pick up uh, in the English, but it's very clear in the Greek. And, And this is what it says. The text says that Judas left his place in the ministry by going and buying his own place. That's what Judas did with the money that he got for betraying Jesus. So he lost his place in the ministry of what he's supposed to do by getting his own place. The church is not the community that claims territory and place. It's the community of the displaced and the marginalized and the outsiders. The church is the sojourn traveling community of immigrants and wanderers. Jesus said this, Jesus said, foxes have holes and birds of the air have their nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. That's Jesus. And the first disciples, the first Christians were those who had left their own things and their own places and sold all that they had to follow Jesus. And Judas did it for a minute. I think that's our tendency. We do it for a minute. He did it for a minute, but then he turned around in the other direction. He wanted to claim its place for himself. This is what the biblical scholar Luke Timothy Johnson, reflecting on this part of the story, says. This is rich. Spiritual disaffection is symbolized by physical acquisitiveness. I'll say that one more time. Spiritual disaffection is symbolized by physical acquisitiveness. In other words, spiritual poverty, if you want to have an impoverished spiritual life, it's found in having much. But the community of Jesus The church is the community that calls nothing its own and holds all things in common. I know, not an easy thing to hear, but it's what Acts says from the beginning and is going to say again and again. And this is who we are. 
This is our story that we're invited to wrestle with and figure out how do we live this together. And so on that really hard note, more to come next week. Chapter 2. So I hope you'll come back and we'll continue on. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this witness of the first Christians who left everything to follow you because your way in the world is so much better than the ways that we come up with for ourselves, God. Your way is so much grace and so much love and so much forgiveness, God. I pray that it will fill us and it will lead us and we will be a community so compelling because we're following so close to you, Jesus, filled by the same Spirit. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to continue in worship. We're going to do things a little differently than before the pandemic, and we're going to try this out and sort of see how it works. We're going to sing one more song together. This is a time of response and offering. If you're here in the room, we have offering boxes. If you'd like to use those for your tithes and gifts, the best way uh, to give to what we're doing in our community here is to give online. You can do that on your phone right now at risehere.org and click on give. Virtually, that's how I'd invite you to give to what we're doing. And also, as we sing the song, we can start to move around, enter into a posture of prayer and response. And in the room, we have communion cups at both of our tables on the side of the room. As we sing this song, if you'd like to participate in communion, I invite you to go grab one of those cups. Don't take the elements yet, and then we'll, we'll take them together in a few moments. So let's, let's respond to God. can I do for you? What can I bring to you? What kind of song would you like me to sing? Cause I'll dance a dance for you, pour out my love for you. What can I do for you, beautiful king? And what can I do for you? What can I bring to you? What kind of song would you like me to sing? Cause I'll dance a dance for you, pour out my love for you. Yeah. I can't thank you enough oh, 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 oh. Cause I can't thank you enough And what can I do for you? What can I bring to you? What kind of song would you like me to sing? And run the sun dance for you, pour out my love for you. What can I do for you, beautiful king? And what can I do for you? What can I bring to you? What kind of song would you like me to sing? Cause I'll dance a dance for you, pour out my love for you, yeah. Cause I can't thank you enough Because I can't thank you enough And I hear you say You don't have to do a thing Simply be with me and let those things go. They can wait another minute. Wait, this moment is too sweet. Please stay here with me and love on me a little longer. And I hear you say, You don't have to do a thing. 
simply be with me and let those things go. They can wait another minute away. This moment is too sweet. Please stay here with me and love me a little longer. Because I'm in love with you. Because I'm in Cause I'm in love with you Oh my heart it burns Cause I'm in love with you Cause I'm in love with you Cause I'm in love with you Oh my heart it burns Cause I'm in love with you Cause I'm in I'm in love with you Oh, my heart it burns for you Whoa, whoa, whoa Whoa, whoa, whoa Oh, my heart it burns for you Thank you to our online community. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next week.